Welcome everybody. Welcome back to Homestead Heart and today I'm in the kitchen. I'm getting ready to do some canning but I needed to get my dinner going because I always get so busy and then by the time I look around it's getting dark and I'm like oh <laughs> dinner. <laughs> so you all what I'm about to do is get my dinner going. I have a beautiful crock pot here that I absolutely adore okay it's one of them I have two crock pots I have this one and I have another one and they're both Hamilton Beach crock pots and I'm telling you they both come in handy and one of our subscribers said you can never have too many crock pots and that person is absolutely right so I'm getting ready to use my awesome crock pot right here and get my dinner going now what I'm getting ready to do is I'm going to do some creamy Parmesan chicken today. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you, not only did I want to show off one of my crock pots, but y'all, I am down to I am down to my last can of evaporated milk and I'm not buying any more. I said once I got to the last can that was going to be it, and going forward, I will just be making my own. Program it for four hours on high. Yes, I am. I got some things to do outside first. But then I'm going to come back in and get started on making my own homemade evaporated milk. And yeah, I'm going to take y'all along with me. Y'all stay tuned. heart and today we are making and canning our very own evaporated milk okay all right canning squad let's get to it all right y'all so in order to make and can your own evaporated milk all you need is one ingredient yeah and that is a gallon of whole milk okay and I'm being very specific, not 2%, not 1%, whatever the one is under 1%. No, you need whole milk, okay? You need the fat, all of it. We're gonna make us a nice, rich and creamy evaporated milk, all right? And this is all you need. Now, I already have my jars here. My jars have been washed and I sterilized them in the oven. Although we're going to be pressure canning this milk, I still prefer to sterilize my jar for 30 minutes in a 230 degree oven, okay? That's my preference. I know some people will sterilize their jars in the canner, right, when it's processing. And that's good when you do that. I do that too for certain foods, right? But when it comes to this milk right here, I, act, I sterilize them and then I fill them, put them in the canner, and then the canner will process the milk, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. This is just me taking extra precaution to make sure these jars are clean because I'm about to put this milk in here, all right? All right. Now, before we begin, let me be clear. There is not an approved recipe for canning milk okay you're not gonna find it in the ball book guide to canning you're not gonna find it in the Amish cook book for canning you are not gonna find it with the US canning food preservation something or other <laughs> not gonna find it okay all right so if you do this 
You're doing it at your own risk. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm showing you what I do. Okay? All right, y'all. Now we're going to get right on back to canning our evaporated milk. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all, let's begin. All I'm going to do, make sure I got these on the counter. All I'm going to do is grab my milk and start pouring it into these jars. You will need vinegar to clean the rims of these jars. Don't just use water, use vinegar, okay? Because vinegar will cut whatever fat is on the rims of these jars. Vinegar will do it, the water will not, okay? Make sure if you're canning milk, meat, butter, anything like that, Vinegar is what you need to wipe the rims of these jars, okay? Just to be safe. But let's go ahead and get these jars filled, all right? Now, I am going to use a funnel because I don't want to make a mess. And when you pour this in, you're leaving a one-inch head space on this, okay? Let's get pouring. Now, there's something else I forgot to mention. When, you, when I can my milk, this gallon milk, it of course is in the refrigerator, it's ice cold. Before I can it, I take it out of, out of the refrigerator and it's literally sitting out on my counter for about an hour. I just don't want to put ice cold milk in the canner. It's just going to take it too long to kind of heat up, warm that milk up through the whole process. I actually prefer it to be a little closer to room temperature than ice cold, okay? If you fill these jars up to exactly a one inch head space, you will end up with nine pints, okay? You will end up with nine pint jars. Make sure you squeeze all the vinegar excess out of this paper towel, all right? We ain't trying to have clab with milk. We're gonna wipe the rims of these babies real good. I'm gonna cut this, get this milk, because I do have a little bit of milk that fell onto the rims when I was picking up the funnel. So I want to make sure I get that off of there. Now that I have all of the rims white, I'm going to, oops, I'm going to grab my lids and get all my lids on, okay? even though my jars were sterilized in the oven my jars set out on the can on the counter until they were completely cold okay they had completely cooled down so these are not warm jars these are cool jars they're room temperature jars milk is just about room temperature canner has room temperature water in it the fire is not on it's important, y'all, this process. All of this needs to come up to temperature together, okay? Not hot this and hot jars and cold milk. All of this needs to come up to temperature together, all right? You want a good product, so make sure it comes up to temperature together, all right? Now I'm going to get the bands on. Make sure you put these on fingertip tight. You notice I'm not cranking down on none of this, all right? Fingertip tight. I'm gonna get these in the canner. This is what it looks like before it goes in, okay?
All right, y'all. Now that we got the first nine in the canner, this is a 23 quart Presto, okay? So I can double stack my pints in this can. So I'm gonna place this rack on top of the other jars. Now we're just gonna continue filling the rest of the jars. Also, to all you mamas out there with the babies, and you might get the women and infant children, you know what I'm talking about, okay? And I know sometimes they give you a lot of milk and you'd be like, I don't know what to do with all this milk. I can't keep up with all this milk. But the children are gonna always need some milk, right? What a great way to preserve it if you can't keep it all in your refrigerator or your freezer. Hint, hint. Now, this jar has a little bit more than that one inch head space that we're supposed to be leaving. And I know that because this jar is not quite to a one inch head space. So now I know that some of my jars are overfilled. I'm just gonna go and find them and take a little bit out. That's not one of them. This is, grab a tablespoon and just spoon a little bit out. And by the time I find them all, that jar is gonna be at a one inch head space. Yes, it is. Now we're just getting them all in the canner. There is no need to debubble these, you all. This is a liquid, so there's no need to debubble, all right? They'll be fine. If you're using a Presto pressure canner, it comes with this little rubber gasket. I like to do it after every third batch or so. I like to take this gasket out and oil it again, okay? You take the whole thing, take the whole gasket out, okay? And you're gonna oil both sides of this gasket all the way around and then you're gonna simply pop it back into place okay now you want to do that because you don't want this lid to stick and then you can't open your can all right so let's go ahead and get that on make sure there's nothing stopping that little I always call it a nipple <laughs> But make sure there's nothing keeping this from moving because this has to be able to pop up once the pressure builds inside of the canner. We're going to close this canner. We're going to crank this fire up to high, okay? Because this needs to build up pressure. Once it starts building up pressure, it's going to start to do what is called venting. And right now I am talking to all of the newbies. It's going to start a process called venting where it's pushing out steam or air from this pipe right here, this vent pipe, all right? And once you see a steady flow of steam coming out of this, then you're gonna set a timer for 10 minutes because it has to vent a full 10 minutes, okay? Once it starts venting, we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do next, okay? All right, y'all stay tuned. Let's get this baby cranked up. All right, y'all, so, hmm. This canner has been venting now for almost 10 full minutes. I only have a few seconds left on the clock. And what I'm gonna do now is add, not the regulator that goes with this canner because my gauge is off. So that gauge is not accurate. So this regulator, this um, 
pressure regulator is not going to work for that, okay? Instead, I have what comes with one of my other canners. It's a 16-quart Presto canner, okay? And with that 16-quart comes the weighted gauge, right? And this weighted gauge comes with a total of 15 pounds. This being five, the second one being 10 from my altitude. And then there's a third one that if you add it on, it'll be 15 pounds. I did a video explaining it and I'll put that in the card somewhere, okay? But now what we're gonna do is get this weighted. This is a weight, not just a plain regulator. This is a weighted regulator. So I got 10 pounds of weight on that vent pipe, okay? And what I'm gonna do is once this comes up to pressure, how will I know? I'm gonna show you when we, when we get to that point, but this weight here is gonna start rocking, right? It's gonna have a steady rock, right? Okay? And when we get there, we're gonna start a timer. This will process for 15 minutes, okay? Now, I'm making evaporated milk. If you were doing just regular milk, 15 minutes might be a bit too long. But for evaporated milk, that is the perfect time, okay? So it's gonna make the milk nice, thick, and creamy, just like the evaporated milk you buy out of the can, all right? So 15 minutes is gonna go on the clock. Once this gets up to pressure, which is 10 pounds for my altitude, if you don't know what your altitude is, you're going to have to Google it and find out what your altitude is so you'll know if you need to use 5, 10, or 15 pounds if you're having trouble with your gauge like I am. Otherwise, scratch that, use this that came with it, and once it gets up to 10 pounds, 15 pounds, wherever you are, that's when you'll start your timer, okay? All right, y'all. So once we get up to pressure, I'll bring you back. See, that's what you're looking for right there. <laughs> Rock steady, baby. That's what I feel now. Let's call this song exactly what I need. You see the way it's moving with a feeling from side to side. Sit yourself down in your chair and enjoy the ride. While it's moving, right steady. Rock steady, baby. All right, y'all, we are processing these for 15 minutes, okay? 15 minutes on the clock. We'll bring y'all back after these are done. We'll get them out of the canner, and we'll have a look together. All right, y'all, the timer has gone off. It's been 15 minutes. All I'm going to do is turn off the fire, okay? That's it. I'm going to let this come down from pressure. All right, we're not gonna bother the canner. We're just gonna let it sit here and it's gonna start to slowly come down from pressure, okay? For all of the newbies, we're not gonna bother this canner. We're not gonna move, remove the weight. We're not gonna bother this. All we're gonna do is turn off the fire. We're gonna let it sit here until this canner is completely cool. If you're not using a gauge here, then what you're waiting for is number one, you want that nipple right here to fall completely down, okay? When that nipple is down, that is a sure sign that your pressure, the pressure in the canner has dropped, okay? All right, if you have a gauge, you wanna make sure this nipple is down and you wanna make sure this is at zero, okay? Then you can safely remove the regulator here and open your canner, all right? But we'll be back, and we're going to do that step together also. All right? All right, y'all. <laughs> it's time to get these jars out of the canner. My nipple is down to zero. My gauge is down to as far as it's going to go because I know it's messed up, so I know where it's going to stop it, right? And this is good. Look at there. Wiggle, wiggle. All right. Now we're going to open this lid, you all. For all of my newbies, please open this lid away from you, okay? Because you will get a facial like no other, all right? We're going to open it away from us. Look at that. Voila! All right, let's get these babies out of this can. Oh, y'all. 
I guarantee you, this smell just like, you know how you open that evaporated milk with the white label and the red writing on it? It smelled just like that. Whoa, what? what? <laughs> Gotta take this rack out of here. All right, y'all, that's going to do it for canning and making and canning your own homemade. I love that sound. Evaporated milk, you all. And yes, when you're baking, do you use this the way you would use canned milk? Of course you do. Of course, that's the whole purpose of it, right? Now, look, you all, I'm going to tell you why this is worth it. All right, this is so worth it. Because a can of the name brand, name brand evaporated milk will run you well over $2 a 12 ounce can, right? The mid-grade name brand milk will run you about a dollar and a half. And the cheapest will rank, uh, can range between 70 cents and a dollar depending on where you get it from. I think Aldi's has it for like 70, 75 cents, but the flavor is not good. I tried it once. That's all it took, okay? So I don't like that one. But then you can get like the store brand from your big box stores and grocery stores, the store brand. It's good. It's okay, you know? But like I said, even that is like a dollar and something a can. It might not be $2 a can, but it is a dollar plus a can, all right? And it's only a 12-ounce can. I have 16 ounces here. Okay, I have 19 pints of 16 ounces. You can do the math on that. You know this is win-win all the way around, right? Win-win all the way around. So two gallons of milk gets you 19 pints of evaporated milk, and it's a lot less expensive than what you will buy in the stores. Don't say, well, what about the price of the jar? Scratch that. Because your jars, you can reuse over and over and over again, right? That can, once you're done with it, you got to toss that in the trash, okay? So this is still a win-win all the way around. And this evaporated milk smells good. You can do this with raw cow's milk, okay? If you buy raw milk, yes, you can do this with raw milk. It'll probably taste 10 times better if you did it with raw milk. Mm-hmm. But, you all, this is going to be phenomenal for baking, cakes, pies, and, well, what about cereal and stuff like that? I don't know about y'all, but when I was growing up, if we didn't have gallon milk and Big Mama had to open up a can of evaporated milk, all she did was add a little water and put it in our cereal, and it was just fine. <laughs> a lot of y'all might not know about that, but... <laughs> That's what Muddy and them used to do, okay? And Mama too. If you didn't have the can, I mean the gallon milk, what we called it sweet milk. We didn't call it, what is it, pasteurized milk? We didn't call it that. It was just sweet milk back then. And if we didn't have any sweet milk, then what we would get was Mama would open up a can of that milk, put it in a little pitcher, add some water, mix it up real good, and it was real good over cereal. So this can still serve those two purposes. Yes, it can, all right? But I may do a video showing you how to can milk to where it's not evaporated, but it'll still give you that close to, it won't be exactly as the milk in the gallon jug, but it'll be close to it. I could even show you how to can that. It's very simple, but I don't do it that way. I normally don't do it that way. I prefer the evaporated milk because I can still, if I wanted just a milk flavor, I can still add water to this and give me that flavor. All right? Mr. H, you want me? No? Oh, okay. He was standing there looking. I thought he wanted something. So in any case, you all, that is going to do it for today's 
video. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and give our video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single video that we upload to our channel. Thank you all again for watching Homestead Heart. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you. I'm going to see y'all in the next canning video. Cannon Squad! <laughs>